Hey everybody, it's me, Kathy. We're back for holiday appetizer number two. We're gonna make my sweet and sour meatballs that come way back from the olden days. And um, it, they're sweet and they're sour and they're juicy and they're really good and they were very popular um, over my years of making appetizers for people. And I hope you like them. The first thing we're gonna do is make sort of a mirepoix. It's not really a real mirepoix. We're gonna start with a little bit of olive oil in a pan. And we have some very finely diced onions that we're gonna slide right in there. And all over the place. <laughs> oh yeah. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. Sweat these a little bit over medium. Okay, we're starting to get a little translucent, and at this point, we're going to add in some chopped garlic. I chopped a bunch of garlic yesterday because I was making a lot of stuff. So we have some chopped garlic, and I'm putting in a teaspoon or so because I love garlic. You can use however much you want. And we're going to stir that in. And a little hint of salt. Spinny. <laughs> and some pepper. If you want, you can put a little pinch of red pepper flake in this. I'm not doing it. And this is dried dried basil. Um, I have pulled up my plants in the garden and I'm drying them. And my basil isn't quite dry yet, so we're going to use this already dried basil. Make that sweet and fragrant and basil-y. Mix all that together. This is going to add the flavor to our meatballs. Now we're going to remove this from the heat, set it aside to cool, and it smells fantastic. And now we're going to make our meatballs. We have a pound of ground beef, and some other stuff. We also have some, I'm doing this method that I used to work for a woman named Christine Catali and she was, you know, Italian. And instead of using breadcrumbs in her meatballs, she soaked bread in milk. This is about a cup of bread and a half a cup of milk. It's been soaking for just a little while. And we're gonna add that and we're gonna squeeze it out, squeeze out the excess milk and put that in. But first thing we're gonna do is, is season it. We're going to do a little salt and pepper. We have some salt in the garlic and onion mixture, so we don't need a whole lot. And just a little pepper because I overdid it on that other one. And we have a nice farm fresh egg that we're going to beat. Okay. Going in. Canadex and bubbles, we'll save that there. And then I like to put a little ketchup in my meatloafs and meatballs. And I have a tablespoon or so. And we're going to add some, some finely grated Parmesan cheese. Now, we're going to squeeze out our, our bread. Squeeze. These were, this bread, I had these hamburger rolls in my freezer. 
so that's what I used. Anyway, we're gonna take this extra bread, extra milk, and we're just gonna discard it. In my case, I'm going to feed it to the dog. And then we're going to mix. The best tool for this is our hands. And the egg and the bread act as a binder to hold our meatballs together. Now we're going to add in our onion mixture. This one Kelly does not get because onions are not good for dogs. Okay, so now we're going to get in. Incorporate everything together. Mix it up really well. Roll it, mix it, roll it, mix it. And when it starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl, then it is ready to be formed into our meatballs. And that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, we're ready to roll and roll. Rock and roll, but just roll and roll. I'm using a, a small measure because these meatballs are cocktail meatballs. So we scoop them out, roll them up, place them on a baking sheet. We'll do that one here so you can see it. When you're making millions of meatballs, you just portion them out onto the tray and then go back and roll them. But we're gonna go along this way. This is gonna actually make a lot of meatballs. And you wanna make them evenly sized so they all cook at the same, at the same rate Beautiful. Move this down just a little bit so I can fit another one. Actually, we can put these a little closer together. So we can fit more on the tray, on the sheet pan. Okay, we're gonna continue with all of our meat mixture and then we're gonna bake them. Here they are, all rolled, ready to go. We have preheated the oven to 375 degrees and we're gonna cook them for about 15 minutes and see how they are and they may go a little longer, but we'll check it out. While the meatballs are cooking, we are going to make our sauce. Our sweet and sour sauce consists of a chili sauce. And grape jelly, about equal parts. Jelly is a little more in it than the chili sauce, so we're gonna stop there. Mix that up and heat it over medium heat until it comes together. And wait till you see it. Our sauce is ready. It is smooth, no grape jelly lumps, and it's ready to go with our meatballs which are not quite finished yet. So as soon as they're done, we're gonna put them in the sauce and cook them a little more. Here they are, out of the oven and firm to the touch. So that means they're done. Got all this stuff, but that's gonna add a little more flavor to the sauce. So these meatballs are too many for the amount of sauce that I made. So I'm gonna save them for another purpose. Spaghetti and meatballs or a sandwich or a calzone, depends on how many I have left. Something. So now, we are going to cook these for about 15 minutes in the sauce so they can absorb all that sweet and sour sauciness. And I'm gonna gently place them in one at a time so we get the right amount. Actually, I'm thinking the sauce might be able to accommodate all of these meatballs. Now that I'm putting them in, pick up your tongs.
gently. I do think they're all gonna fit. Wow. Good going. And that pan is gonna be loved by Miss Kelly. So over medium heat for, like I said, about 15 minutes, we're going to simmer these meatballs and then we're gonna try them out and see how they taste. Simmering nicely. We're just gonna move them around a little bit. I actually increased the heat a little bit to reduce some of the sauce. So it's more of a, a glaze than a sauce. We're not gonna reduce it too much. So, we got a few more minutes to go. Okay, I've changed my technique just a little bit because I've never done this before with these meatballs, as many years as I've made them. I'm trying to reduce this sauce so it's really thick and it adheres to the meatballs. So, so far we've been about 15 minutes on medium high and I'm gonna go for a little bit longer and see what happens. I stopped them a little early because I didn't want to burn them, but the sauce did reduce some and thicken up and the meatballs are well coated and absorbed some of that, a lot of that sweet and sour mix. And now we're going to serve it. Pretty plate. And we would just make a little serving. painted flowers on these on this plate we're gonna arrange them nicely and give you a little something to eat them with <laughs> whoa you can use a toothpick if you want but I found this pretty little silver fork in my in my drawer and there are our sweet and sour I'm gonna call these old-fashioned sweet and sour meatballs because they are old-fashioned probably all your grandmothers made them this way and um, there you have it Appetizer number two.